what is up my dogs lost in here so i want to talk to you guys today about some of the awesome baits that i got to collaborate with catchco and salt native to help design and make and i'm super super stoked and proud of them and now that they're released i want to do kind of a quick breakdown and rundown of all the baits and show you how to use them and give some tips and advice on what to do and where to throw them and hopefully it helps you out and hopefully you guys can go and grab some of these baits because they're awesome i really wanted to design them to catch big fish and a lot of fish and so you have a total Total set of baits where it's like you have bucktail jigs, spoons, paddle tails, and shrimp, things that are designed to catch anything and everything. And then you have the Mad Minnow and the Beast Walker, which I wanted those like big fish lures, you know, those big five inch plugs that are meant to catch big saltwater game fish. And I couldn't be more stoked with how all of this turned out. So we're gonna run through some of it and see if we can catch fish while we're at it, man. First thing is first, a thing of beauty, the bucktail jig. Probably one of the simplest and oldest lures, but it still crushes fish. And I've caught everything from flounder, trout, redfish, snook, tarpon, small mahi, triple tail, like you name it, you can catch a fish on the bucktail jig. It just totally depends on what you're fishing for, how you fish it. So right now I'm in a bay where I've been seeing some small tarpon rolling. And so I want to imitate a little bait fish and I'm just going to like real slow, medium retrieve and just do little rod tip bounces and bounce it up and down. That's almost looking like a glass minnow. Now, if we were fishing for something like a black drum or a redfish, we're totally going to slow the whole presentation down and we're going to drop the jig to the bottom and work it like it's a shrimp or a little crab. And so you just whip it, whip it out and you'd sit there, let your line drop, wait a second, and you'd let it sink, get to where you're tight and just a tap let it sink back down and that's one of the beautiful things about a bucktail jig is that it can be fished a bunch of different ways just based on what you're trying to fish for and what you're trying to mimic and i mean if you need somewhere to start a bucktail jig is not a bad place and you can catch just about any fish on it like i said man probably one of my favorite baits of all time to throw is shrimp now this is the skelly shrimp and i i always say to people there really isn't a single predatory fish that at one point in its life didn't eat a shrimp. You know, even if it's a bull shark that's 300 pounds, when it was a little shrimpy bull shark living in an estuary like this, he was munching on shrimp. Snook, tarpon, redfish, black drum, sheep's head, cobia, triple tail, backlash, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really does not matter. A shrimp has the ability to catch really any fish. And you vary how you fish it. I love fishing structure with shrimp, whether that's docks or mangroves. But for me, I have a lot of success fishing a shrimp slow, especially during the cooler month. But it's a uh, let it sink, pop it once or twice, twitch it, let it sink back down. If you can be patient with a shrimp, you'll catch a lot of fish. But you can also do some good if you're looking for like that reaction bite where you're throwing up around structure or maybe it's a grass flat or a mangrove line and almost working it like you would think of like a floop or a small jerk bait where you're imitating a shrimp that's fleeing like boom, popping up out of the grass popping up out of the pilings but for me i do my most damage when i know how to just kind of chill out be patient make a whip up to some good structure let it sit just let it sink and you're imitating now way more of a shrimp that's creeping on a bottom a way i like to think is that shrimp don't really do anything <laughs> like, they just sit there and kind of meander around on the bottom except when they're being chased so you doing this little slow creep looks really natural and you're just kind of pop pop and let it sit pop pop and so instead of like this really erratic shrimp that's jumping around everywhere which shrimp don't really do and even when they are running they don't travel super far you know you're looking like a really natural shrimp here and there's a ton of color options available and you just want to base it on what you're fishing right now we're fishing really stained water it looks dirty but it's not it's just stained from all the mangrove leaves and a root beer chartreuse is really good in stained water and very dirty water and then you have all your natural colors that are awesome for some clear flats and i mean some like the natural and the glitter bomb like those are some of the best colors in my opinion for fishing mixed water you know but a shrimp it's it's so cool because you know like the jig and the spoon like those are great search baits and you do have a high chance of catching a big fish on them but with a shrimp 
you really never know. Like you could throw up underneath this dock and hook a 20 inch snook. You could throw up underneath this dock and hit, hook a 40 inch red or an 80 pound tarpon will eat a shrimp. Like the, the limit is endless with that type of bait. And so it's really, really awesome to throw. And I've probably have caught more fish on artificial shrimp than anything else. Right here, probably my favorite bait out of the whole entire salt native lineup. I'm just obsessed with throwing top waters and this one is the bomb. I wanted to kind of help design a bait that could be used as an in-between of a pencil bait and also a really, really tight walk the dog. I feel like with salt water, you either have like nice little walk the dogs or you either have like pencil poppers and this thing can kind of act as both. So I wanted to be able to make a bait where you could just literally chuck it a mile and work really fast for you know jack and bluefish and tarpon go offshore and catch bonita and kingfish black fins whatever you know and it has a through wire construction so it will not pull apart and you can fish it really really fast but you could also get up by structure like a dock make a precise cast up there and just walk the dog up in that danger zone and try to draw out a big giant snook or maybe a tarpon that's hiding up under there. And my lord, have I caught some big fish on this bait already when testing it out. I've caught a 41 inch red and countless of big snook on it. I've caught some giant, giant crevals. I mean, this bait is meant for catching big, big fish. And that's what I'm all about. So recommendation, you know, I like throwing it on a spinning rod or bait caster. I really don't have a preference other than if I'm only going to be fishing docks really or majority fishing docks. I do like throwing on a heavy bait caster because you have that control of stopping it right where you want to go. But if you're trying to just cover some distance, man, a long spinning rod, like if you're throwing off the beach or you're off in the ocean or even in a bay trying to look for jack and bluefish, a long spinning rod will bomb these plugs a mile. But when I'm fishing inshore, I like to use a bait caster for that like precision of getting right in the structure, but you really can't go wrong. And it could be intimidating to throw sometimes a big bait like this, cause you're not gonna catch your little, you know, 15 inch trout. I mean, you still might, but you're not gonna catch a lot of them. This is for the big dogs. And right here we have the Mad Minnow. Probably one of the biggest saltwater staples of all time is the diving plug. And it works so well to cover water and to imitate anything, really, like any bait fish, it works. And you can throw them inshore around docks and grass flats and mangroves. You can go whip them offshore for bonita and kingfish and dolphin. Feel like chilling out and having a beverage, throw it behind the back of the boat and just troll the sucker. But they work amazing. They have great flash. They have internal rattles inside of them, have a really tight wobble and super solid hooks, man. A really solid hook. This is another big fish bait, man. And uh, working around bridges off the beaches, a huge thing down in South Florida, man, is throwing diving plugs along the beaches and bridges for big giant snook. And this is exactly what I had in mind when helping design this bait here is what would I and my friends throw when we're trying to catch big snook off the beaches or around bridges or fishing docks. And I like to work it kind of a straight retrieve and just let that minnow rattle and swim, but you can vary it totally on what time of year or what the conditions are. So if it's a lot colder out, that's when you wanna move more towards your jerk bait setting where you're gonna like kind of a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. And the colder it is, the longer I like to let it pause but it's a really versatile bait. And I have a good buddy who he crushes snook and he fishes them almost like I'd say like a slash bait where you mix in a straight retrieve and a jerk bait where you're just kind of burning and adding in some really heavy twitches while you're burning. And all this is supposed to look like is a nice pilter, greeny, mullet, whatever the color you're trying to imitate a good bait fish that's on the run making a lot of vibration and noise and it's going to draw on big strikes from big fish and same thing as the beast walker through wire construction on these because i want to catch big fish on these baits man my advice to you if you're on a big fish mission 
start with a beast walker in the morning when it's nice and low light and then when the sun comes up move over to that mad minnow and they're pretty awesome because you can really cover ground pretty effectively fishing a diving plug like this and here we have the paddle tail i don't think any inshore fishing arsenal would be complete without a paddle tail swim bait they're just so straightforward and i have to have to guess they're probably the most fish style of bait in shore over anything else i think tarpon just rolled right there oh. they are an incredible bait because the versatility of how you can fish them just totally dependent on the type of hook you use right here i just have an eighth ounce really stout jig head which is what i like to use maybe an eighth or a quarter when i'm fishing docks and flats and lets you just kind of hover around the structure for longer but you know you could go fish 20 feet of water throw on an ounce jig head and be in the game looking for big snook and big drum or you could be trying to finesse a fish around the docks or on a light jig head you could be way back in the mangroves and you could put on a weedless swim bait hook and you could be fishing totally weedless or maybe you're fishing really thick grass flats and you need to be weedless the versatility on how you can fish these is endless and when i fish them i like to either go for just a medium speed retrieve with maybe every once in a while like a small twitch mixed into it or if i know the fish are being kind of finicky and slow i will throw up around a dock and I like to call it like feathering it or yo-yoing it where you almost like let that sink down and pop it up. And so you're activating that tail kicking up and then letting it kick back down the bottom and just popping it up off the bottom, popping it back down and doing that. And it just depends on what the weather conditions are like and how the fish are reacting. You know, there's certain baits where depending on the conditions, like if it's really cold or whatever, it's gonna be really hard to fish that bait. But a swim bait, man, you could just creep that sucker along the bottom if you're having a really slow day and the weather conditions are tough or if they're just crushing bait in front of you you can just whip it and burn that bait in and cover ground with it and get those fish blowing up out of the water coming out of their skin to eat it all right a thing of beauty right here the little golden spoon now there's a gold and silver spoon they come in a bunch of different sizes and the spoon is maybe one of the best baits of all time now unlike the bucktail i don't think the spoon catches everything but with the simplicity of how you fish it and what you can catch with it and the amount of fish when you get into a good spoon bite is awesome and a spoon i just fish it basically two different ways either throw it out and it's just a straight retrieve and we like to call that a casting spoon and you're just turning and burning ground and this is one of the best baits ever for Bluefish, mackerel, jack, redfish love a gold spoon, trout love a gold spoon. It just really can catch any kind of fast moving fish. And I just like to use it a lot of times when I'm seeing bait schools. Like if you see schools of minnows or menhaden or bunker, greenies, whatever your little shiny bait fish is, a spoon's a good choice to start. And uh, I also love to use it to just cover ground and burn water and find and locate fish. And so you got the way to use it where casting spoon deal. Now if I'm fishing a little deeper and the fish are being a little finicky, what I like to do is cast it out, let it sink, and we'll call it a jig and spin, you know? And just bounce it up off the bottom, maybe pull it up eight or six feet, like boom, 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 boom. Like pull it off pretty hard and then let it flutter all the way back down to the bottom. And that's a really good way to catch fish if they're holed up deep. You know, if you're in a big channel pass or something and there's a bunch of bluefish or jack or whatever hold down, a little jig and spoon down below can work, man. And such, such a killer bait off the beach, man. I don't know if there is a better bait you could throw out the beach than a spoon. And especially beach, wade fishing, and even on the boat. Like, the spoon has a place everywhere you go. And it is a staple. Like, you gotta have a spoon in your tackle box, man. It'll always come and play at some point. rod wise the spoon it just totally depends on the weight of the spoon that you're throwing but for me it's like i like to use a rod that throws far and a rod that throws far and you can cover a lot of distance with because that's really what the spoon's all about is covering ground to find fish and the ability to throw that little hunk of metal super far so something that casts far is the jam 
and you can burn spoon pretty fast. You gotta figure out where the fish are at, but sometimes, you know, it's a slow retrieve, but a lot of the times, man, especially down here in Florida, you're burning and they're munching. Well, hopefully some of the quick tips I dropped on you about all the new lineup from the Salt Native Baits helped you guys catch some fish here in the future. I recommend trying all of them. They all have incredible applications and really will fill your tackle box and make you successful when you go and fish inshore. And I couldn't be more stoked and proud about these baits. So go and scoop some up and uh, hopefully I can see some of the photos of you guys whacking some biggins on Instagram and whatnot. But that's it for me, you guys. I appreciate you. Until next time, peace.